Hi guys, welcome to lesson one of the raw fed and nerdy fall course, which I'm not calling the full course. Sorry about that. We're already back to almost back to fall again. So um, fall course, full course are going to be the same thing. This is an introductory video to the entire course and also to module one. So if you're finding this on Facebook, I will link those lessons below. Now there's a lot of how to feed raw guides and it can be really frustrating because it seems like everybody has a different opinion. You know, do we need to um, feed fruits and veggies? Things like that. I want to go into what you're going to learn in this course and why this course is different than a lot of these how to feed raw guides. So in Raw Fed and Nerdy, um, if you haven't heard of us already, we are about using nutrient requirements when developing um, a diet for your dog or your cat. If you're familiar with raw, then some of this is going to be a little bit of review. Uh, if, you're, if you've never fed raw and you're not super familiar, then a lot of this is going to be new. So traditional approaches to feeding raw, at least in the, the past several years, is to use ratio of ingredients. So that means uh, the most common one is 80-10-10 called PMR, and it's 80% it's muscle meat, 5% liver, 5% other secreting organ, and 10% bone. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, the calculating the bone percentage can be kind of tricky, but you can pick up on it pretty quick. Now, the issue with this is, you know, it's only looking at ingredients. It's not looking at nutrients. So an 80-10-10 diet, uh, you know, you feed based off of a percentage of your dog's body weight. So for example, if you had a dog and um, you were feeding two, two and a half percent of their body weight, and it was, I don't know, a, a pound or pound and a half of food, and within that pound and a half of food, 80% would be muscle meat, 5% would be liver, 5% would be other secreting organ, and 10% of that would be raw bone. Now, let's say you had two of those diets side by side, and one of them used pork liver, the other one used beef liver, one of them used 80-20 um, ground beef, the other one used beef chuck for stew, and they also had a mix of uh, you know, chicken wing, and another one used turkey neck, and they're, they're very different is the bottom line. That doesn't tell us about the nutrients in those diets. It doesn't tell us how many calories is in the diet. It doesn't tell us where the calories are coming from, you know, how much is coming from protein, how much is coming from fat. Even the liver is going to be really different. So for example, uh, pork liver is going to be a lot different in copper than beef liver would be. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, you just balance over time and you don't have to worry about nutrient requirements. The thing is, in this course, we're going to learn about what can actually be balanced over time because not everything can be balanced over time. We're going to learn about which nutrients uh, should be supplied daily, whereas which nutrients, you know, we can kind of catch throughout the week. This is really important because one of the shortcomings with an 80-10-10 diet is it doesn't address the most basic part of a diet, and that's energy density, the amount of calories in the food. So say you um, are feeding raw and it's really easy to, you know, let's say you get a commercial mix or you're trying to do um, what's on sale at the store or freezer cleanouts. Very often, um, you know, it's really easy to reach for the fattier cuts of meat because they are, you know, less expensive. And it's not that dogs can't have, um, you know, higher fat diets. It's just that fat brings a lot of energy to the diet. And if you have a high energy diet and a low energy dog, the dog is going to gain weight. And if we reduce the amount of food, which is going to be the traditional advice, you know, if your dog is gaining weight at two and a half percent, then reduce that. Uh, down, you know, down to 2% or whatever, whatever it may be. Now you have decreased the calories because you've decreased, you know, the whole diet uh, in and of itself, but you've also decreased zinc, you've decreased magnesium, you've decreased the amino acids. It's really important to figure out the energy requirements, but also the nutrient requirements. Uh, and this is going to help you pick out those ingredients if you want to use 80-10-10 as a base. So if you're really comfortable with those ratios, uh, it's totally allowed in raw, fed, and nerdy. We're just asking that you use them in addition to nutrient requirements. So this is going to help you figure out ingredient choice. It's going to help you figure out what nutrients can be balanced over time. It's going to allow you to not be stressed about not knowing if something's in the diet. You don't have to wonder, is, you know, is there enough vitamin D in the diet? Is a couple eggs every week good enough? Sardines a couple times a week, is that good enough? You know, by the time you get through the course and start formulating, you won't have those questions floating around in your mind. You don't have to worry about, you know, is my dog or my cat getting all of the essential nutrients? Now, we look at nutrient requirements, and that's only a small part of the course. We look at the source of the nutrient, uh, nutrient requirements, um, things that are in food outside of the essential nutrients, 
We also uh, will briefly touch on, you know, some of the needs of older dogs and cats. Uh, on that note, this course is for um, adult cats and dogs. It's not meant for a pet that has therapeutic needs. It's not meant for a puppy or a kitten. So if that, if you're in that situation, um, I really encourage you to reach out to a professional who can formulate for you or feeding a commercial food that is properly formulated um, for your puppy or your kitten. And that's not an 80-10-10 mix all by itself. So if you're feeding 80-10-10 all by itself, um, I would maybe, you know, further look into uh, other foods. When you get through the end of the course and you start formulating a diet and you post in raw fed and nerdy, if you want, um, the diet that you formulated and you're looking for feedback, you'll see why it's really inaccurate to say that raw fed and nerdy is only about the nutrient requirements. Because when people post their diets in raw fed and nerdy for feedback, what people are looking at is, uh, are wanting feedback on is uh, mineral balance, uh, the source of the nutrient, uh, where the calories are coming from. So there's a lot to it. So stick to the course and try not to jump ahead straight to formulating. The reason why I say that is because that can become overwhelming when you, when you want to go right into formulating because you're super eager, uh, whether you're using the RFN spreadsheet or pet diet designer. The problem is you'll get into the, the program or whatever you're using and you won't know um, the function of nutrients and the, uh, some of the nuances of the nutrient requirements. So maybe, you know, a lot of times people will do this and they won't know about vitamin K, uh, vitamin K synthesis, for example. And so they'll add like a ton of leafy greens to meet the vitamin K requirement. Or maybe they'll be stressed out about meeting choline or something like that. That being said, you can also meet nutrient requirements on paper, but it's not accounting for uh, where the nutrient is coming from or nutrients that increase the need of another nutrient. So for example, it's really uh, common to try to meet manganese and magnesium needs uh, with seeds and nuts. Now, you could meet that on paper, but you're also adding quite a bit of fat to the diet and you're also feeding an amount of, you're also feeding a larger amount of an ingredient that has anti-nutrients, which interfere with the um, absorption of other minerals. So we look at that type of stuff in this course. Another example is you... Um, you add fish oil to the diet and you're right at 100% requirement or right at one times the recommended allowance for vitamin E, uh, but the vitamin E needs are actually increased because of the type of fat that you're added to the diet. So we're going to look at all of these things. It's not a weekend project, so uh, please don't go into it Friday and expect on Monday that you're going to be formulating unless you have a, you know, a background in this stuff. It's also going to feel like there's bits and pieces and it's not tying together. It will tie together, especially in module nine. It's really important to start learning about, you know, the basics of nutrition science to understand more complex subjects like diet formulation. Now I'm going to cover some of the basic myths that uh, we hear a lot of times at Raw Fed and Nerdy. And the first one is, of course, I touched on it already, and that you can just balance over time. Again, we're going to look at what things can be balanced over time because we don't really balance the water solubles over time, for example. Another myth we hear a lot is, I don't do this for myself or for my family, so why should I do it for my dog? Well, actually, I would argue that you should do it you know, for yourself and for your dog because um, at least, I'm speaking for the United States at least, but 98% uh, of Americans um, are not getting enough of the essential nutrients regularly. And actually, the majority of Americans have a nutritionally responsive condition. Some further reading on this is a blog post on raw fed and nerdy called Food vs. Supplements. And I talk about the history of nutrition science. And I talk about why it's important to look at the source of the nutrients and why the essential nutrients are still important. This is a concept called mindlessly healthy, where we make healthy choices without a specific goal in mind. An example of this is actually somebody who's eating, uh, who was eating a processed diet that was fortified with a lot of um, vitamins and minerals, and they switch to a whole food fresh diet, and you see a lot of major improvement at first uh, because they've switched to these whole foods. But over time, they might develop marginal uh, deficiencies because they haven't properly, you know, determined where they're going to get all of their essential nutrients from, and which was previously um, fortified in the food that they were eating before. And it's no different with dogs. If they go from, you know, a processed kibble that's fortified with all of the essential nutrients and they switch to raw, you see uh, amazing results really quick for a lot of dogs. Uh, but however, we're really concerned about the long-term health and getting all the essential nutrients in regularly. 
So to sum up that myth, human to dog isn't exactly a, a great comparison. Um, and it is actually important that humans look at their own nutrient requirements. And dogs and humans age a lot differently. So you think of how long it takes for a puppy to grow to an adult versus a human baby to grow to an adult. The next myth we hear a lot is that um, cooking destroys all nutrients. So if you are wanting to cook for your dog, you can absolutely still take this course. Uh, there's going to be some things that are pretty specific to raw, like feeding raw meaty bones and all of that. Uh, but this is definitely works for feeding a home cooked diet. In fact, it's very useful because ratios are um, pretty inaccurate when you're feeding cooked, especially because we can't feed those raw meaty bones cooked. And that being said, the reason why you can't say that, you know, cooking is in is inferior or removes all the nutrients is because, you know, we actually use the nutrient analysis of cooked foods uh, when we're formulating a cooked food diet. In fact, it really depends on the dog. Cooking can be really useful for a dog that has disturbances to the immune system, for example. It could also be really useful for a dog that just is very picky about their food, won't eat a large volume of food because when we cook, you know, we have to start with more raw ingredients, but when we cook, we reduce that moisture and we concentrate the nutrients. So that's a, that's a concept called bulk limiting. And it actually happens quite a bit with a lot of dogs. So cooking can be useful. Uh, in RFN, we don't say that one is um, inferior. We look at the dog that we are feeding. There's a lot more myths about using nutrient requirements. If you go to rawfedandnerdy.com and you look at the blog post called uh, I think it's called Popular Myths About Using Nutrient Requirements. Uh, there's also one on my personal website, which is feedthydog.com, called NRC versus FeedIAF. And that's, that includes a lot of, of the things that a nutritionist is looking at when they're feeding a dog or when they're formulating a diet. It talks a lot more about how you know, nutrient requirements are only a small part of the picture. Anyways, I hope you enjoy all the lessons in Module 1. And I hope that I will see you in the next video. Stick with it. If you get overwhelmed, take a step back. Join us in the Raw Fed and Nerdy Facebook group if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video.